Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Nature's BS. Me and Nick are back today. Minus Andy, we are missing a player in the team. <laughs> but he's there in chat. <laughs> he's not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> be impossible to get rid of him <laughs> yeah where, where is Andy is he in Scotland I think he's somewhere in Scotland now yeah I'm jealous yes we can't get rid of you <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting some very good wildlife encounters if if Andy's in Scotland which I'm sure he does have I think we might have one from him actually mm, there's a few in the discord which would be nice to see us travelling around like nice. far, Bempton Cliffs and out in Scotland, so all 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 around and everywhere. Wow, well, I'm sure I'm sure he's having the best time. He's currently just outside Dundee. Lovely. Lovely. Very jealous. It's been very rainy. Yeah, is it rainy with you, Andy, and everyone else? Yeah. We've got Pookie. Pookie we'll do a chat. weather update. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> Yes, of course it's wet up there. <laughs> How have you been though, Nick? I've been good. Um, been hot <laughs> all of the previous days, and then yeah. today I've been very wet. I feel like it's been all the extremes. <laughs> Not like a nice cool day or anything. It's been really hot, but really wet. Uh, but yeah. I've been good, busy yeah. doing things. I I don't mind working in rain sometimes when it's like really really heavy no but like you know like a light drizzle like it's kind of refreshing mm -hmm. or maybe because i wasn't outside today is why i'm saying this i i definitely prefer working in <laughs> rainy weather compared to like hot weather today it was just we were just moving loads of materials like up this big hill i've done it in the hot and it's just so exhausting <laughs> so i'm like it's yes rain finally i can actually survive more than five minutes without needing a break yeah yeah i do agree actually i think i'm more of a cold person rather than a hot person yes no definitely like i'm happy working the cold because if i am cold i could put on a lay i can get moving that kind of stuff but if i'm yeah. too hot i just i can't do it i can't cool down i just can yeah. sizzle in the heating of the like, <laughs> yeah boil <laughs> grumpy as well so just yeah. a bit grumpy. <laughs> bit short tempered in the heat <laughs> But yeah, you're, you're right. When it's cold, you can just put layers on. And I always feel like with a hat, you can always just, I actually think I could be like in like shorts and a t-shirt in the in the winter. But if I've got a hat on, I'll feel really warm. <laughs> Brain warm. So everywhere warm, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you release heat through your head? I think you do do quite a lot. Um, there you go. I imagine There's like your ears as well. Like if you're covering your ears, like those get really cold yeah heat, so. exactly mm. maybe i should test it in the winter just go out in a shorts and t-shirt with a hat on and see mm. if i can survive you look very british that way <laughs> over like shorts and t-shirt midwinter then puff coat like oh, no, it's, it's getting too hot i need to put on like nice big puffer coats like yeah. yours, so it's, i don't understand some people how do they do that <laughs> yeah just walking around <laughs> yeah. i'm mad or looking at moths or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um what's pookie said oh do you, uh it's wet it's wet up in scotland this will lack says rainy all day but yeah pookie very mixed getting dry mornings and thunder in the evenings okay i love thunder oh yeah thunder is nice and mm. if it's in the evenings it doesn't affect you too much hmm you know i i just love the sound of thunderstorms just big like powerful sound oh. I love it so much. Yeah, literally the force of Mother Nature, isn't it? I know. <laughs> Hello, Jono. I got very wet today. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Join the Nick Club. Nick also yes. got very wet today. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't need a shower because I've really had on the entire day. So. <laughs> true. <laughs> true, actually. <laughs> so I'm not hot and sweaty. Yeah, it's under the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Feels better. <laughs> Next mm, definitely. Well, chat. How's your week been? What have you been up to? My week. What have I been up to? All right, let's try and think back. Um, 
other oh let's add to the accident list of me recently um <laughs> i've twisted my ankle um oh, i was gosh. out on site and i jumped off a gate i jumped over a gate and my fell my foot fell in a hole and it went oh. and i was like <laughs> jumping off a gate that's just not taking a step like jumping for, oh no fully jumped off the gate not looking at the floor beneath me and yeah foot fell in a hole my ankle was like oh gosh are you okay um yeah I'm, i've now cancelled everything out, out on stuff this week <laughs> oh no so no new oh. surveys for me or or anything else but yeah um, i hope it'll be better next week yeah i hope you're better soon that, that sounds awful because i yeah. I don't think I've ever properly twisted my ankle. I'm very lucky, but I've, I've like sprained something slightly, like pulled a muscle or something, and that's painful. And that's just walking, so I can't even imagine jumping into. Oh, it's an agony. <laughs> it did actually really hurt. I can um, imagine. The thing is, because I made it obviously over the gate, I then I sat there for about twenty minutes, and I was like, well, now I need to make it the other way. <laughs> over the gate just climb over just flop over the side roll back home <laughs> yeah it's like if you watch that theme, scene in wolf of wall street where he's like trying to get to the ferrari and his legs are <laughs> like that, probably. you turn it back to your ferrari oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah my ferrari <laughs> conservation ferrari <laughs> My, my little Corsa, my beaten up Corsa yeah. that I absolutely <laughs> ran through the roof. <laughs> well, I always think you can tell environmentalists by their car. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And their stickers, like the stickers they have like, on the back or the front or something. <laughs> yeah. I've got an RSPB like, sticker on the back of mine, actually. <laughs> nice. But yeah, and, and I've got 170 bottles in there at the moment, so for all the newt survey so i can't oh, see oh okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> just really hydrated it's yeah. really hot you just bring just a, a few spare just to be sure <laughs> yeah. yeah imagine just four bottles of water never sure <laughs> your friends are, oh, do you have a spare bottle i can share like aha uh -huh. <laughs> open my boot just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah open the boot <laughs> <laughs> no it's a bit like that at the moment like I, yeah, I can't really take anyone in my car. And to be fair, any time I do take someone in my car, they're always like, Jesus, your car's, like, busy. And I'm like, look, I'm giving you a lift. Please don't complain about my car. <laughs> for the newts. <laughs> it's for the newts. It's for the wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how my week's gone. Hopefully next week I'll be... Yes, more healed. <laughs> more healed. Yeah, I think I've just got bad luck at the moment. Or it's just um, a bit stupid recklessness, <laughs> probably. No, I can imagine it's... Uh, I, on the site I was today, it's just really boggy and there's like really big tussocks of grass. It's like if you stand on it and then you can just slip off. So yeah. I've been always watching my feet. And I can imagine it's just the one time you don't. You're like, oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> Something bad will happen, so... I, it's not stupidity at all, it's just hard to rain. Yeah, I think I was thinking, I wonder if my tape measure, like, I think my tape measure's in my pocket, and then, oh. yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Barnacle Bum. Hey. So what have you been, what have you been seeing? I hope we've got yeah. a lot of pictures from you, Nick. I have a lot, but not as many as poor Andy has to go through. <laughs> I always feel bad thinking, oh, I have so many pictures. Um, but I've, I've cut down a lot. Um, like I'll start with some... I don't know. Oh, you love it. I know. <laughs> I, I've got the highlights, though. Um, I'll start with some quaking grass. So I've been doing quite a few verge surveys. So sides of roads, the verges, and... I'm with the Wildlife Trust and we manage some of them. So we get them cut later than the rest. So we wait for them all to seed and then they're cut and then we go and rake them in the winter. And then around this time now, as all the wildflowers are coming out, we go and see what's on there. It was really nice because you can 
because we went in the winter, did all the raking, which is a huge amount of effort. And then you think, oh, what's the point? It's all dead grass and everything. Nothing comes up here. And then you come back now. It's like, oh, there's so many species, like small 10, 20 meter section. You can get well over 50 species, like different species. It's amazing just the biodiversity you can get in such a tiny area. Um, and I was thinking, I haven't really delved into this too much, but verges are really, really important. So it's like less intense farming kind of all the way up until like 50s, 1950s and 60s. Biodiversity was kind of not doing well, but it wasn't kind of just falling off badly. And then it's when we started having really intense farming. So no boundaries on the fields, like cutting down all the hedges to get larger fields, like really trimming down on the hedges as well. And really getting rid of those corridors and verges and borders. That's when like biodiversity really just dropped off a cliff almost. Mm-hmm. And especially around here in North Wales, if you go in the mountains, lovely views and things, but zero wildflowers, not a single wildflower at all. You might get like a few club mosses and like lichens and mosses on the tops, but just no wildflowers at all. The only ones you find are just on the verges, on the roads. Um, so if you do have a verge near you, have a look at it, have a look at it, because you can find so many species. Um, and no more May, no more summer. Yeah. It's not all pointless or anything. Even just not cutting it for the first time in ages, really good. Mm-hmm. So much wildlife just sprouts up out of nowhere. It's amazing. For sure. Yeah. I remember like talking about kind of like agriculture and and um like borders and stuff like that. Like I remember learning at uni, there's like a kind of debate whether agricultural intensification is actually better like intensively farming areas and then having more like green spaces and and producing more food from the areas that we use for farming but I think Mm -hmm. now being more out and about you see how much like you said how much life is in the field margins and in those little buffer strips I mean they're buzzing with life like those butterflies flies hot flies literally everything so I used to think, oh, maybe there's a point to that, but I now disagree with it. And I think that mm. nature friendly farming is definitely the way forward. Yeah. And like even having a nature reserve is great, but if it's surrounded by intense farming, so there's just no way for any of the wildlife to interact, it can not be useless, but just have very little increase in biodiversity and just helping wildlife. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a really interesting subject to think about. Uh, but yes, this is some quaking grass. Um, so one of the grasses I found on my survey, and I thought it was a really pretty grass. As Barnacle Bum says, very pretty grass. Um, yeah, yeah. Really lovely. It starts with kind of that greener colour. You can see right at the bottom a few kind of pale green. Um, and then as the seeds develop, you get the really lovely kind of maroony, kind of reddy purple colour. Um, and as like the wind blows, they quake or like swing and move in the wind. And this is a really, they're lovely to watch through a hand lens. Like if you just look, look up close, very delicate, lovely patterns, lovely colours. So a nice grass to start off my, um, my encounters. Yeah, I, I mm. like I like picking grass. Like you said, it kind of dances. Mm. Yeah, it's lovely. Sunny days, blowing grass in the wind. Uh, this lack like says, yeah. yeah, any species depend on it. Not that I know of, but I'm sure it is important to some. Let's see if I can find anything quickly. Wildlife Trust page says, the seeds of quaking grass are an excellent source of food for all kinds of farmland birds, including yellowhammers, <laughs> linnets, green finches, and house sparrows. Um, oh, no. I imagine it's a good point, because there aren't too many seeding flowers right now, or plants in general. Like, some dandelions are just coming to seed now, but I mean, most things will be flowering later. Mm, yeah. But yes. Well, that's cool. So, yes, for birds at least, important. And I'm sure invertebrates and other things will have um, different stages that feed and depend on it. Um, but yes, my first one. Uh, I go to my other flower, a heath-spotted orchid. Orchids are great now. There's so many coming out. I had the early purples for a few months, um, and I've seen the leaves of common spotted orchids, mm-hmm. and the flower heads just starting to emerge. 
And then I went to one of the reserves, and there's just hundreds of these orchids. And they're really, they're strikingly spotty, is how I describe them. Because uh, you have the early purples, which have like a few spots on like the tongue of the lower petals. Um, but these heath spotted were completely covered. Um, really pretty flowers. Yes, yeah, so it's a good time for orchids. They will, all the f kind of funky ones are coming to mind. I think it's like marsh orchids, I think, are starting to come out now here in North Wales. These heath ones. And, they're, um, they're gorgeous. That is mm. absolutely fully in bloom, that one. It's, it's yeah, stunning. Uh, Barnacle Bum <laughs> says they remind me of Raspberry Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, though. I can see. I can see that too. That would be a delicious ice cream, actually. Oh, yeah. business idea. Ice cream that looked like orchids. Yeah, that, that could work. And like different, like different orchids, different wildflowers. Because you get a good range, like colours and yeah. like, textures almost. But then mm. would they taste like an orchid? They couldn't taste like an orchid, because that wouldn't be very nice. Pro yeah, you need like yeah. raspberry ripple spotted heath orchid. <laughs> Something that flows off the tongue a bit better than that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a really long name. <laughs> Um, most orchids remind me of food. The white ones are like strawberry pop tarts. Can make me hungry thinking about all these food. Yeah. <laughs> Every time everyone sees an orchid now, they're gonna be like, oh, "Why am I? <laughs> why am I salivating?" <laughs> Such a tasty looking orchid. <laughs> uh, yeah. Imagine you just start going and just like see <laughs> all the orchids. The orchids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll be hated by all the environmentalists, yeah. like, oh, an orchid. <laughs> Please don't go and eat all the orchids you see, as tasty <laughs> as they do look. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tasted <laughs> one? <laughs> Suspicious, I have, I just, I've smelled them, but I haven't tasted them. But I imagine they wouldn't taste... Because quite a few plants are edible, but mm. I feel like that would just kind of taste of... Like the flowers, at least, probably just taste like generic, petally, kind of floral taste. Nothing too special, I'd imagine. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> if I find one that's been like nibbled by a rabbit or something at the bottom, so it's already gone. Maybe, maybe we should interview one. We should interview like a rabbit or a deer <laughs> and say, how was it? Yeah, what are your thoughts on eating this recently? <laughs> 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 okay, it's interesting, interesting. <laughs> um, yes, it's a lovely orchid. I've oh, I've been doing some. I did some mothing last Wednesday, and I got some real corkers. Um, I'll start with a pebble prominent. Yeah. It was my first, because like now, all the kind of like winter moths. So like the browns and greys they all start to fade out and then you're getting the exciting like summer ones the like big patterns spiky heads bright yeah. orange all those kind of fun funky ones um coming out this is like my first proper i'd say like summer mothing um not trip event moth trapping yeah. session that's the word um but yes this is a lovely pebble prominent um okay you mainly see Kind of from the shape, like the darker um, kind of body, like a paler wing with that kind of darker crescent. I'm not sure why the term pebble and pebble form, I'm not sure how that happens or where that comes from into its name. The pebble? Um, yeah, so I think what a pebble could mean. The only thing I, I was thinking of this, like the end of it, like it, it's kind of like like round like is it pebble shaped that's what i always kind mm. of thought but i that's... can see that hmm. maybe <laughs> andy says i'm way behind on our moth off right now got so much work to do oh, this well, is like my got... first proper muffing of the moth off <laughs> rather than shop windows <laughs> <laughs> no shop moths this week sadly oh. 
Oh, Actually, right. I did. See, I did see one on the office. <laughs> Come back next week. I did see one. It's not a shop. It's like it's on an office wall. So I'll include that next week. That'll be my half shop moth, office moth. Yeah, I think it counts. It was on a bit like I. Would, it wasn't like out in the wilderness as such. It was in an urban area. So I think that would does count. So okay. every next week, tune in for my yeah shop moth of the week. But did we say we're all going to have a shop moth for our moth off? Did we say that or am I imagining that? We could try and get a shop moth. I think I think we should have the round of best <laughs> shop moth and then have a, the moth There's off. different categories. <laughs> different yes. categories. Own, mm, different categories. We'll try. Yeah, let everyone go find your own shop moth. Yeah, I'm going to go to Dom guys. I think you had a good one <laughs> from Domino's. That's oh, there's a type of pug, like oak, oak tree pug, maybe pug of some sort. But yes, try your local Domino's for your the pugs. Or the local sunbed shop. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Moths like tanning. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking bright it's lights. Like, I'm so pale after the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, dump this off. Let me in. <laughs> Um, yes, um, if you do find moths, put them into the moth folder. Pookie's been seeing some cracking moths. We'll show off in a bit. Um, yeah. But yes, we'll um, see all moths. Pookie says, been keeping an eye out for moths. Not going to trap them, though. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. If you've been keeping an eye out, it's fine. You can enter the shop moth category <laughs> if needed. <laughs> <laughs> um, two weeks, do we have first battle? Yes. Um, keep the images coming, everyone. Share them on the Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pookie's not been trapping, but seeing loads of moths, so you don't need to trap to see cool moths. Um, lots of them you just find out about, like they're yeah, just random trees, walls, mm -hmm. things like that. You can find moths anywhere, it's lovely. Yeah, or if you've got a big torch. Yeah, big torch, great. Perfect. Moths love everything. <laughs> they're really not fussy, actually. Hmm. Just leave your <laughs> kitchen light on and just open the window. <laughs> I've been having so many. Brown house moths and white shouldered house moths in my house over like last week. It must be about ten or so. No. I'm just fearing slash worrying that it's just the same moth and I'm like, be free out the back and then it's like, oh the bathroom lights on just go <laughs> straight back in or something. I don't think it is, but I just I'd feel really bad if it has been the same moth. And it's like, oh, I've been up in this bathroom like a whole week now. Why didn't you let me out? <laughs> It's like Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do a really nice back. towel. I was sitting right. Oh, Mel, it's good. One more night. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, be a shame not to. <laughs> um. What was the moth? I'll go for. I'll go for my lesser swallow prominent. Oh. This is a recon. This is like a. I feel like if a fighter jet was a moth, it'd be like this. It's like it's sleek, it's like sharp, like high contrast, like blacks and whites. He's cool. He's very cool. This is a yeah. cool dude. Lesser swallow prominent. Um, cool I was talking to my family. It is a cool name. And I realised quite a lot of moths sound like a what three words location. <laughs> like I, lesser swallow I, prominent. I, um, I had some other ones as well. I can't remember that. Moth names do have that random touch to them sometimes. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that is true. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see the what three words for each moth. Oh, <laughs> see where I put you. That'd be a good rabbit hole to go down with that board. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, where's this moth? And oh, it's like Central Africa. Cool. <laughs> and you can't sleep. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. I'm looking <laughs> where moths are. <laughs> moths come up on on what we were. <laughs> um, Barker Worms says, "I love prominent moth camp, prominent moth caterpillars. They're funny looking things." Let me I, have a look at I these. I've not yeah, seen I can't any. Picture the caterpillars of prominent moths, but some of the caterpillars are just crazy. Oh, they're cool. That's a soil prominent. Ooh. They got a little horn. Wow. Maybe that's why, because it actually says swallow question mark. 
And usually, I think swallow just refers to like kind of that classic like swallow tail, where it kind of like branches into two like long streamers. So okay. maybe the lesser swallow prominent caterpillar has those long streamers. Mm, not obviously, but I can see. It's got kind of like a horn, the one I'm seeing on the back. Mm. Maybe like a lumpy horn. Because mm. there's a waterfall near me called Swallow Falls. And it's like the water comes down, hits a rock, and then breaks into two. So it has that kind of like swallow tail. It was very uh. pretty. Um, that's where I would imagine there's like that pattern on the moth or caterpillar somewhere. Um, but if anyone knows, I'd love to know. But, um, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so this one is a swallow prominent, probably because of the. It's got. Mm. Like yeah. as, as an adult, which it does have the. But then probably a lot. No, not all of them do. Hmm. Here's it's the still right angle little... or something. Mm, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Uh, but yes, Sorry. that's the lesser swallow prominent. My next moth, I'll do. Or oh, I'll go for a scorched wing. I love these ones. Like it's like dead leaf or dead twig moths. I love. Can't go wrong. Um, so it's like a bit of wood. Yes, I am not moth. I am just a bit of burnt dead wood. Oh, that is um, cool. I've never is, seen it before. That is such really a cool, cool moth. And it's like that bit of like an extra touch of bending the thorax up, thorax up a bit. Um, I just find the evolution of moths is just crazy. Because like, that... oh yes, I'm just gonna bend my tail. Oh, I haven't been eaten. That's quite useful. I might do that next time. And yeah, yeah. Like, why? I'm gonna talk to Mike about this. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're not gonna believe it. Just bend your tail back up. <laughs> I've been literally living for years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, scorched like, um, um, scorched wing. It's like um, you know, like um, like on a sycamore or something where the they have the little twirly. Mm, yeah, the seeds. The seed heads. It, it does look, yeah, like a dried seed, like that thin, like dried, crispy mm. kind of look. I mean, good that... point, yeah. Cool find. I, I've seen them a few last year. This is my first one of the year. Just, oh. Just the, the detail. Like a bit, mm. looks a bit like a, a cross section of wood. Mm. Um, I feel like they're kind of like twists and knots in the grain. Such fine details and patterns. Beautiful. Even got like a bit of pink on it. Yeah. Hmm. You like a slight hint of pink. Looks like it was on both sides as well. Kind of mm. the trailing edge of the form. Lovely. So that's the scorched. Scorched wing, I think it is. Um, and for my, I think, yeah, my final moth, I have one of my favourite all-time moths. It's the buff tip. Oh, nice. Classic. Is it a moth or a stick? Um, <laughs> I will have, I, I'm planning a section on the stream, or is it moth or stick? <laughs> my, my partner's been like, you got to do this. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. So good. now... I've got some of the moth-looking sticks. No, stick-looking moths. But now I need to find more of the moth-looking sticks and try and get pictures so I can have a little game show. Yeah, so, but you need I mean, to, like, soon. size them. Make it, like, I know. really hard. I know. I, I'm trying really hard. It's like, oh, my gosh, that's a perfect-looking stick. Um, uh -huh. I, I found one that looked just like a buff tip. It was a bit too long, so I tried to snap it off. And then it was a bit too short. I was like, no! So I'm keeping an eye would, out for good. I want, I want to play this. It will come to the stream sometime soon over the next few weeks, probably. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. This is a buff tip. I think it's like the classic picky moth. Mm. And they're really cool looking moths. Just They're really obvious when they're like on an egg box or this is on the side of the trap. But I'd love to find one. Like resting naturally, just on a pile of dead twigs or something, just see how perfectly it blends in. Yeah, hundred um, percent. 
No, I, mm. I remember putting one on a tree when I found it. And even just it laying on the tree, like it literally just looks like a fallen twig. <laughs> like, these, these are insane. These are insane. Yeah. It's if you really could be cool. any moth, would you be a buff tip? I, I think so. Yeah, I think if you ask me now, I'd say like, it has to be a buff tip. Like a yeah. cool stick, just like, I'm a stick, not a moth. Just, just lay low. <laughs> Just lay low, yeah. Have some peace and quiet. No one knows you're there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, not getting bothered by anyone. Like, I'm just a stick. My own business. <laughs> oh, yeah. Michael says, what moth would you be, cat? Oh. This is... It actually is a hard question, so I feel it bad. It is. Asking, you know. <laughs> I feel like you actually need to prep this question. Um... I guess you could include caterpillars as well if we want to be broad. It is a hard question. You can come back to it. <laughs> I would be, I, I would know what I'd be. A lace border. I'd be a lace border moth because they... The ones I found were in Norfolk in a really, really nice old railway line, which no one goes to. It was very peaceful and they're really pretty. So mm. I'd be that one hanging out with my friends. Yeah. Oh, at the old train station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just, oh, some of the moths. I like I've been doing it quite intensely for a year or so, and there's just so many new moths you find. It's like, how on earth have I not seen this all? They're just such beautiful yeah. things. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And it's just that not many people know that these are in our country, which is just I know. like, you know, like, I just wish everyone could see these and just be like, mind blown. Yeah. No, they're really, really cool. Uh, oh, what next? I'll, I'll go for a damselfly case next. Um, this was really cool to see. So, one of those is a big fan. Oh, I got my peppered moth. Oh, yeah. And as soon as I completely forgot about my peppered moth. <laughs> Thank you, Lakshmi. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another moth, another moth I found. Um, peppered moth. So, these ones I knew about before mothing because it was the classic like GCC biology evolution like natural selection um example because before the industrial revolution almost all of the pepper moths looked like the one in the picture so like kind of mostly white but then lots of black speckles on them and then as the industrial industrial revolution took hold and there's lots of smog and pollution all the trees in the cities didn't have any lichen on them because lichen require really pure and clean air so they all died off the trees so there's no lichen on the trees. Then all the peppered moths, when they went and rested on the trees in the day, they stood out because there was no lichen. So they were getting eaten by all the birds because they just stood out, so obviously. And then some of the peppered moths had their melanic form, so they're really dark, basically black. And when they rested on the trees with no lichen, they blended in much better, so they weren't eaten. So through natural selection, you had a much high proportion of that melanic form of the peppered moth um, so that's kind of like a quick evolution in very brief sense um, just showing how a species had to quickly adapt to a new environment um, with a change yeah to a new environment as it changes um, so that's how i'd heard of the peppered moth um, so i've i've seen the melanic form like last summer i caught both the regular and the melanic form and it's really cool just to see ah, ah. it is just like the same moth but just basically almost black and oh. it's weird to see like us as humans i guess we've done it so much but just seeing like because of us and what we've done like this moth is here now in its different form it's very it's a weird feeling just like humans have so much power over nature and yet we've done so much more but just holding my hand and seeing that little moth it's a good way of just noticing how much influence you can have on the world. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I, I've only seen this form of pepper moth, so I've not seen a like what? So it was like completely black. It's basically all black with like a few like whiter grey splotches, but it's like almost all black. Oh, cool! Basically. I want to see Which a picture. Really... I want to see a picture. I... Of I think if you just Google like peppered moth, but like maybe just black or something. Yeah, just like black peppered moth. Um, they're very cool, a bit like Batman or something, just like completely uh, black, big triangle. Um, yeah. I'm sure there's yeah, there's plenty of articles like Butterfly Conservation have a peppered moth and natural selection. So if you're interested in the story, you can probably find it written better somewhere else. But it's very interesting. Um, so I highly recommend reading. Yeah, it's, seeing them like next to each other is so so funny that that's the same moth. Like it's just mm. weird. It's like a kind of male and female form, doesn't it? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. But very pretty moths, and they're quite large as well. So kind of two inches uh, resting wingspan. Um, so you get a proper good look at them. They're really beautiful. Barnacle Bum yeah. said it's like a QR, QR code flew from the page. <laughs> <laughs> it does, because it has like the smaller splotches and the bigger splotches. And it's, it's quite try scanning it next time. Yeah, no, I want to try scanning my peppered moth. <laughs> See if it brings up a what three words for common peppered moth or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or if it comes up with things you should know about the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like why I'm now black because of you humans. Thanks. So yeah, <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> um, but yes, cool science and moths. Um, but yes, that was a wonderful mothing. I think 90, 90 individuals I had with. Oh, nice. Ooh, 20, 20 or so different species. Mm. And I had like 50 brown silver line moths. Mm. And if you've seen them, they blend in perfectly to dead bracken <laughs> on the ground. It is amazing. Um, but yes, lots of moth mothing happening. So just go and have a look because it's great. Yeah, for sure. Hi, Rob Boffin. What's up, guys? Hey. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Andy, how many wildlife encounters do I have? Oh. I only have about 10 pictures. I have limited myself. Andy, <laughs> I have learnt from my mistakes. <laughs> no, they're not mistakes. We love to see it. No. I need to post them on the Discord, the rest of them. I don't mean to do that, so I'll try and do it after the stream. Yeah. Um, yes, and, some plants. Yeah, we've, got, we've got more moths in two weeks, guys. Yes. Be prepared. Brace yourself for a mothing week. Yeah, maybe we could do a winner of of our viewers. Mm. They go incentives. Yes. I don't know what you win, just a massive pat on the back. <laughs> massive pat on the back and love from the moths. And you get a pep of moth delivered to you with a QR code <laughs> <laughs> saying you won. Yes. <laughs> you scan it, it's like... Little confetti. Yeah. <laughs> I should sort that out. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was all my moths. Thank you for lecturing me for pointing out the last moth. Um, and now I'll go on to a drag damselfly case. Um, so one of the reserves I work at is a massive fen, so a large kind of body of water with reed beds and things like that. So we have loads of dragon and damselflies. And I found this damselfly case in the water. And it's really cool because you have the larva stage, like the nymphs, which are aquatic. And they're swimming around. I think some of them can last years in that stage. It's amazing. And then I saw the case just floating in the water. And I thought, like, is that an actual nymph or something? But it just didn't move A's and I eventually kind of mixed up. And it's just a really... It's just the exoskeleton, I think, exoskeleton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exoskeleton of um, the larvae. And it's very weird just to hold it because it is just like a, a hoodie. So in the water it looks like and it's hard and brittle. And you pick it up and just floop. 
flopped over. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so now there are loads of dragon stamps of flies out. Um, so they all kind of, as the larvae kind of emerge just above the water on like a nice warm day, and they slowly emerge into the adult form, leaving the case behind. Um, but yes, have you seen any dragon or damselflies recently? Yeah. Oh, this is this is my picture. Oh, wonderful! That is very well timed. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I've um, I've seen lots of dragonflies, mainly broad body chasers. I've seen loads of those. Um, mm. But obviously, I can't get a picture of them because they are so skitty and so quick. I think in my life, I've got a picture of maybe one or two that have actually <laughs> sat still enough for me to take a picture of. I don't have. Do you have much luck with dragonflies? I feel damselflies. I tend to have a better mm. chance with. I feel like I. I thought I saw. A broad body chaser actually as well on Saturday, and I was just using my binoculars to get a photo because, like, I knew I'm not going to get close enough. But it looks nice to use the binoculars. So. Oh, cool! So it was like this is a... enough. Yeah, so like resting, and then I just like with my binoculars and having my phone through my binoculars, which not an amazing photo, but definitely good enough to get a nice view. Nice, yeah. So yeah, it's, I think. Um. Oh, actually, I think yeah. I remember showing one last year of a dragonfly that it like i think it just come out the case because its wings were like all bent oh wow and so i don't think it had pumped its wings out yet so luckily <laughs> i i did actually manage to take a picture of that but that's definitely because it was like i couldn't fly <laughs> so that wasn't, <laughs> please like... don't eat me i'm not ready yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that wasn't my good photography skills <laughs> it was just a convenient time um but yeah i just, I just think as soon as they as soon as they see me coming near, they just completely scoot off. But yeah, um, damselflies have more luck with these ones. Are large red damselflies, which I have mm. been seeing a lot of actually. Um, probably yeah, seeing a lot of um and blue damselflies. And I'm trying to learn my blue damselflies, but they're all quite similar unless you're very close up. So yeah, yeah no, I'm just starting to learn my damsel i'm like oh my gosh this is this is hard but i do have a dragonfly like survey training day on friday so hopefully i'll come back and say i know all my well, i know all my dragonflies <laughs> i know a few more of my dragonflies uh, yeah nice i do actually have a dragonfly book i have a um you know what is it the british what are they called the british like the British guides, you know, the ones I mean? Oh, I think so. Yeah, like Britain's damselflies or dragonflies or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do actually have a book, um, which is really useful, which I, I, cause mm. I tried to, yeah, I tried to learn them a few years ago. But yeah, the blue damselflies, they still are quite hard to do. Um, but yeah, I know some people that are really good at dragonfly surveys that can like literally just obviously get them with a net and they can... They can oh, pick wow. them up with their wings because their wings are so strong. Like you, oh you can gosh. never damage their wings because they're they're really really strong. Wow. They're I wet. feel like I'd never want to do that just because I feel like they should break and it's like oh, they just look so delicate. I don't want. To... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they still have some people survey them, but yeah, they're 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 just machines, dragonflies. I think like the way they mm. move, like that's just like the evolution on that to make them move that yeah. quickly that. But yeah you know, their eye, they just do look very robotic as you said yeah and very cool very cool hmm. <laughs> this relaxing they do look so delicate <laughs> they do um what else do i have i did a bird race on saturday i can't remember if i mentioned that last week but bird, so bird, ra bird race so seeing how many birds you can spot in 24 hours Oh, okay. Um, this is exciting. A fun event. We didn't start at sunrise because we were quite tired from a busy week. And it was a Saturday. It was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so we started like eight or so. But we did manage to get 69 species, which is pretty good given the weather. Because it was quite... We had a really big sea mist come in for the morning. 
so that kind of didn't help things and then uh, we just didn't see some of the common speech like raven is the one that i keep on coming back to it's like we just didn't see a single raven the entire day and we've gone to places where we just expect to see ravens all the time mm-hmm. which is very surprising um the source of nice species and we had two big highlights or for me I had two big highlights one of them was great views of some cuckoos on that cuckoo photo and so we're kind of on top of a small mountain project like it's like big hill almost like nice rocky uh, like rocky not almost scree slopes but like big boulders big like open moorland um, loads of meadow pipits um, and we heard a few cuckoos and I, I was like there's a cuckoo over there singing and then so another one and then another one and we think there are four in total like calling or just sitting like in this photo um just getting mobbed by the middle pipits mm-hmm. which is really weird to see um but yes it's not quite an andy photo but the main bird or big bird on the rock is like light gray and dark gray is the cuckoo and then the like smaller brown bird above it is the middle pipit or one of the middle pipits is just flying around trying to scare it off so um, why? So that was multiple me- meadow pipits trying to scare off the cuckoo. So, from what I understand, it's I think it's a pair of meadow pipits, and they've a nest nearby, and they're just trying to scare away the cuckoo because they know that the cuckoo parasitizes on meadow pipits. Oh, they know. Oh, see, I thought the meadow pipits didn't know this. Because I was thinking, I think they know as an as like an adult cuckoo comes in and starts calling and think they know then but i find it amazing when a a, a cuckoo egg is laid and then they rear it and they get that bond but they're like standing on basically an adult cuckoo and it's like sounding like yes my little meadow pippet you've grown so big and it's like feeding it and i'm not sure where that disconnect is but yeah this doesn't make sense no i'm gonna i'm gonna try and chase you off i don't want you to lay any eggs in my nest and when it does, they're like, meh, like, I, I like my yeah. baby, my baby cuckoo. <laughs> they're just different. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if anyone does know, I'd be very interested to see. Um, Pookie says, seen tits chase off cuckoos. Fair, fair enough. They, You know what? Tits are quite sassy. They've got a bit of attitude. Yeah, they so. do have an attitude. Because I um, think it's meadow pipits and Dunnocks, I think, are like the main cuckoo targets, if I'm correct. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, Barnacle Bum says, I've heard small birds think cuckoos are raptor shaped and it's scared and um, scare us away thinking it's a bird of prey. Ah. I did yeah. think it was a kestrel as it came flying in. Um, because they do have that kind of I say raptor like raptor shape um, to them. Yeah, they do. Maybe. They do. Yeah, they do look quite raptor shaped, don't they? Hmm. So maybe it's not a cuckoo they're seeing, just a big scary raptor they're seeing instead. Yeah, and um, they've got a nest, so thinking, get away from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Barker. That is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. It was quite funny after watching the scene in the photo carry out for a few minutes. Eventually, the medhood just like sat down next to the cuckoo and was like, "Ah, oh, I guess I'm just like, you're not going to eat me. I guess I'll just <laughs> just stop." Which is very funny. It's like, oh, maybe they're friends now or something. But I think just given up. It was a very funny. So I think, go away, go away. So go away. Actually, no, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're you... tired. Just lay your eggs in my nest. I'll look after them. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> you're Thought busy. You... Anyway. You've got to fly back to Africa in a bit, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leave it with me. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but meadow pivots. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Back your ideas up. Too much of a people pleaser. <laughs> the definition of a people pleaser. <laughs> um, yeah, people saying look like sparrow hawks, grey black yeah, and stripes. Do. Yeah. That would make sense. Because you do see lots of like past and small birds going after buzzards, kestrels, sparrow hawks. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that does sense. make sense. Yeah, hmm. they look Thank you for uh, that. Yeah, they've got a raptor-like pattern on the chest. Yeah, that's true. Um, mm. Barnacle Bum says, when I queried one in the garden and couldn't tell if the meadow pipits were parenting or chasing them away. <laughs> mm. oh, 
Such awesome birds, cuckoos. Just having that instinct, honestly, like hatching before the other birds and then the chick instantly having that instinct just to shove all the other eggs out. That's, that's how on earth did evolution is like, I'm a chick, I'm just going to shuffle over. Oh no, the egg's gone. Oh, this is quite good, actually. Oh, no. oh no. <laughs> All the food for me. <laughs> did I just do that? Oh, and again. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the youngest murderers ever <laughs> <laughs> and the parents come back hmm I swear there were more eggs in there when I left like no, no. just me <laughs> just me I'm hungry I'm really hungry <laughs> um, yeah so seeing all these cuckoos was a really big highlight because I hadn't actually seen a cuckoo until then I've only heard them Mm. It was amazing just seeing loads of them, well, relatively loads of them around. It was really special. Um, and the other highlight from the bird race was seeing my first ever night jar. <gasps> which is really cool because I heard them a few weeks ago, but I didn't see one. And I had two fly, like, <laughs> relatively, like, really close. <laughs> yes, I got the video. Oh. Good views. Very good views. Such a, yes, I thought Andy would appreciate this one. Um, really cool. So he was like standing on this like prominent bit of rock, and then I was like, oh, was like, oh that's night job. And then behind me, like probably about seven, eight meters away, just comes gliding past. And then comes like, I don't think you can hear it in the video rail, but there's like a wing clap right at the beginning and then glides down. Oh, and that like, is like cool. Oh, amazing. And it was really light as well. I think this was only half nine or so. Mm. It was still really light. Got a lovely view. Yeah, oh, yeah. That is um, really cool. I bet you were chuffed with that. I was so happy. Um, such odd birds. Like they fly like a wood pigeon, where they just like glide with like their wings really high up. Mm. Um, glide down and like making really odd. Like the flight was good, like a chirp. And like a wing claps and they just land and then that just droning churring sound is very odd like i there must be so much folklore of night jars being who even knows a godly figure or something because it's really hard to pinpoint the sound when they're churring sometimes it just sounds like it's just everywhere around you or changing here and there it's a really cool bird oh that's really cool um, um pookie says still need to see them should go out in the evening hear them in the morning yes go out in the evening pookie if you can hear them never know you i'll eat all your moths though oh okay they can, they can have a few yeah <laughs> not not the buff tip though not the, well, <laughs> the buff tip for me <laughs> Oh, then I have to having favourites, and that feels mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will like say it's hard to spot them until you spot them. True. Mm. Yeah, Rod Buff and their dragons. They help other people. They are. I think because we only get the European night jars, and I can't remember what it is or which species of night jar, but some of them have like horns that like bars on their tail. They do look do they? really. Yeah, I. If anyone knows, please say. But like one yeah. of them looks like it's like really big eyebrows, which is almost horns. Oh, um, cool! And it's like such a dragon-looking bird. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Please, if anyone knows, I, I want to Google it and have mm. a look. Yeah. Um, barnacle buffers that they can eat all the moths you can't eat. <laughs> that feels really mean. <laughs> I really funny. It's like oh, I don't know who you are. Here, you little night job. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Throw up into the air. <laughs> um, Bisselak says, I had a night jar less than two feet away from me. Wow. And had two to three people pointing it to me, and I couldn't spot it for a few minutes. Yeah. I guess oh, it's yeah. flopped. On the ground. ground. Oh, is it on the. Yeah. Oh, it was on the ground. Wow. Yeah, I've seen like pictures and videos on the ground. They just disappear. I remember on Spring Watch, they had like the camera. And he's like, here's the night jar nest. Anyone see it? And they like slowly zoomed in. And it was like 
the bird was feeling like the entire frame and then you just couldn't see it still and then it like opened its eye or something it's oh, really yes. cool encounter they, they yeah, are gorgeous they're gorgeous birds I, yeah i love them also talk about spring watch it's on next week yes that's starting next week mm-hmm. tune in yeah Apart from wednesday evening when you can tune in to us instead yeah yeah <laughs> we start earlier i think because they start at eight is it <laughs> yes it starts at eight yeah, so we start at have, have one eye this way, one eye that way. <laughs> I see no problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Deacon Winters, they, they're so well camouflaged when nesting. Um, mm. I do my first night jar survey next Tuesday. Ooh. Exciting. More night jars. Mm -hmm. So if you can go out and see night jars, highly recommend it very very cool experience even if it's like pitch black just hearing the chirring by itself is such a cool experience very very cool yeah i don't think i have any or that i know of any night job places near me oh. not yet not yet Hopefully. Maybe. yeah yeah to be fair maybe in like five five ten years maybe mm -hmm. i know they're trying to bring them closer to where i am by making mm. like habitats and stuff because i think at the lodge at sandy they did have them one year but then they've never returned so yeah maybe a few years hmm. i'm hopeful i believe mm. um final wildlife encounter was from a trail camera which we put out which is a very exciting site which we've been looking for for a long time um I wonder if I should tell you now or let the. I don't see. Look at the, look at the video, it's really cool. A heart of your little water? Mm hmm. <gasps> and you get a moth in the video as well. Like two for one. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get any better. Um, yes, yeah, so this was really exciting to get. Nice. We found sprints everywhere, and we'd seen them on the pile, which was in the middle of the frame. So we knew it was just around. Put a truck camera out, and it was like the first, I think it was the first evening we put the camera out, it got this. And oh, me and my friend, when we it. saw the camera, we were just like jumping around high five, like, oh my gosh, it's really exciting. <laughs> so very, What's very it happy. It's, there's a style just out of camera, which is like propping itself up and like leaning on. Um, so it's like a foot path style going uh, on the side. Um, but yes, very, very cool moment. Probably my height of the week because it was very, very cool. Yeah, that that's really, really cool. What an amazing video. Where did so? Where did you put the camera? Is it near a river? It's yeah. It's like large wetland. Um, isn't like. It's a bit hard because there's no like obvious place you would find an otter, like otter sprint, but we were just generally looking for sprints over the entire site and did find some like on that big mound which was in the middle of the frame. So we thought, oh, it looks pretty recent. If we put a camera, might see something. Um, didn't see it sprained on the video, but it was right next to it, which was very exciting. So, very exciting. So, hopefully, next time we'll get a video of it sprinting something which would be really cool. Otters are so cool. They're very cool. Nice very find. Cool. Yeah, so that's my a... week. <laughs> you had a really good week. I always hate following you from your previous <laughs> wildlife encounters. <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen? Um, so mine are mainly insects. Really, yeah, basically all of them. Um, first one is small copper, um, oh, which is really nice. I'm not complaining about it. Um, so yeah, don't really find these very often. They're kind of like heathland butterflies. Oh, look at that striking orange color, it's nice and mm. fresh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the males of small coppers are quite territorial. So they often choose a piece of bare ground or stone on which to bask and they await passing females. They behave mm. aggressively, any passing insects returning to the same spot when the chase is over. 
didn't yeah. chase me off. So yeah, I'm surprised it didn't fly off. Like I'm very impressed you got so close to them. Like butterflies is another one of the like similar stuff to dragonflies are just really hard to get a photo of. Yeah. Thank you. you. I did um, chase it for a bit. <laughs> it's like, fine, you just get a photo and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. Um, but yeah, these are always nice to see. So I think, is that one a bit of like chickweed? Is that chickweed? Looks like a chickweed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my guess of some sort. I saw this um, actually when doing my Natchat toad surveys, um, which I don't really have any photos of at the moment, guys, because they're all tadpoles. So oh. they literally look like they look like toad tadpoles. So they're not too interesting at the moment. <laughs> but please bear with me and hopefully we'll have some lovely toadlets. But when will I... they start coming out? What are we at? May, June. So June... End of June, July-ish. Okay, so not too long. Not too long. And mm. I because I think toadlets are cute. The Natter Jack toadlets, that's like extra that's like cool. Another level. <laughs> that's like another level. I like to look toadlet. They got little... Oh gosh, that, is, that is very cute. They got the little green bit on them. They like a big, got like a mohawk. <laughs> No, I'd love to see an Astrak toad. One that'd yeah. be really cool. So I've only seen the tadpoles at the moment, so <laughs> yeah, can't wait to see one either. <laughs> um, my other wildlife encounter was the large red damselflies, which we've already seen. Um, my other one is a moth, but I didn't do a moth trap. This is a day flying moth, which is cinnabar moth. <gasps> oh, I love cinnabars. First one this year. Which nice. Is, which is really fun and nice. Um, oh. But yeah, so... Oh, look at that. That's a great photo. Yeah, it looks quite striking, really... actually. Mm. Um, but yeah, really kind of easy moth to tell. With It's just so striking. Um, and it's day flying, so yeah, you'll see it in the day rather than most moths that you see at night. Um probably familiar with the caterpillars as well they're they're mm. black and yellow um and they love ragwort so they're all over ragwort so I, I actually love to look at ragwort when it comes out because yeah once you see one your eye just gets into all of them yeah. um their bright colors warn predators that they're poisonous they only build up their poison after feeding on the ragwort so I actually didn't know they are actually poisonous. They are actually poisonous, oh. yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so the caterpillars spend the winter as cocoons on the ground before emerging as moths in the summer. So I don't know if this mm. is early for cinnabars. Probably maybe a bit. I don't know. I, I haven't seen a cinnabar adult yet. Um, but I've seen yeah. loads of caterpillars. I don't know when their flight time is. Good. I'm trying to think, but like I think I I I always see them when it's like hot, like really hot. Mhm. Mm so that's maybe they're hmm. maybe this has just emerged or something, but yeah. Website Norfolk Wildlife Trust says adults fly from May to early August. Oh, okay, so early mm. for the flight season, but not too out of character. Mm. Um, but. But mm. yeah, that was mine. And then we've obviously got our species focus. Yeah. But yeah, that's all of mine. Mm. Lovely moth. I remember when I was on Rathlin, I'd find the caterpillars of the cinnabar moths everywhere on the ragworts. And I think I counted about 30 or something on one plant. That was like the most. It's just amazing, as you were saying, see one and there's another and another. Yeah. And they just appear. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. Um, oh, this is actually, yeah, this is my species focus. This is a really rubbish picture, but I will defend myself because I only had an iPhone camera and if, like, like I'll say again, the potential, if I had a good camera, you would see this amazing photo. Just <laughs> Are we calling for an Andy photo? <laughs> yeah. You can um, see the bird. 
there's a bird. Does any of you know what bird is from this fabulous photo? <laughs> Mm, no. <laughs> I say rancher well, of some sort. It's like, it's like a half Andy photo. It is a half Andy, but I think it's a lapwing. So oh, I, I can see that. Yeah. I'm the barn pretty door. Sure, yeah, because like, like if you actually door. zoom in, you can kind of see the colours. Like, it's like okay. black and white. So I was like, I believe this is a lapwing. Hmm. No, I, I can definitely see it as a lap wing. Okay, thank you. Oh, I... Is it a paddle wing, someone call it? Yeah. Or are they really like square wings? Yes, square wings. And they had been recorded in this area. So, and because hmm. the, they were saying like, you know, the pewit. Oh. Yeah, pewit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Zoom in a bit. <laughs> it's such a bad picture. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Barnacle Farm, it does look lap wingy. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Go. It's solid. I'm glad, I'm glad it was a lap wing. Um, <laughs> Deacon Winters, I was watching lap wing chicks today. Oh, nice. See, I think these, so it was, I don't really know too much about their behaviours, but there was two lap wings flying overhead. So is that like a nesting behaviour? Yeah. I think so. Because I think the male's displaying is like very aerial, but I'm not sure if it'd be too late for displaying. So I think it would have already paired up and started uh, yeah. nesting by now. Yeah. Um, oh, Deacon Winters, and I've got picks. It's not Andy picks either. Oh, fine. Right, Andy, you're going to one, one up me on this one. <laughs> Flatbring chicks. <laughs> I have to wait until next week, though. Yeah. Yeah. Until next week, you're just gonna have to deal with this bad picture of Lapway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pookie says they're very protective of their nests. Mm. Maybe they're, they're yeah. really walking, walking near. But yes, yeah, so this is my species focus of the way of the week. Mm. And I'm glad everyone confirmed this was Lapwing. Um, <laughs> I thought it was. Um, but yeah, so these are familiar birds of farmland and wetlands. Lapwings can often be seen wheeling through the winter skies in large black and white flocks as spring approaches these flocks get smaller some birds head back to the continental breeding grounds and others disperse to breed in the uk males put on a dramatic aerial display tumbling through the air accompanied by the piercing pool which gives them which gives them their other common name pewit Females can be spotted on the nests, which are simple scrapes on the bare mud or sand. By late spring, cute fluffy lapwing chicks can be seen venturing out to forage. If the nest is threatened at all, the parents will attack or mob the potential predators. Hmm. So lapwings can be recognised by their long crests, black and white patterns and very broad, round wingtips. From a distance, lapwings look black and white, but up close, they have an iridescent green and purple sheen. So did you know, as well as lapwing and pewit, the bird is also known locally as the green plover. It's Latin, vanalia, mm. meaning little fan, and actually refers to its floppy, flapping flight. The name lapwing is thought to derive from an older English term meaning the leap with a flicker in it, because the dense winter flocks appear to flicker between white and black when the birds flap their wings. Oh, that's, I like how it describes it as a what was it flap, flopping flappy flight. <laughs> it's like yeah, description floppy there. flapping flight. <laughs> Vanalius means little fan and actually refers to its floppy flapping flight. <laughs> it's a good phrase. I like that. <laughs> yeah, and, and lab wings are just gorgeous. They're just such pretty birds. Mm. No, they're yeah. really just cool to watch even like on the nest or like territorial as you were saying just flying around it's really pretty very and, cool. and the chicks which we'll see next week will probably yes. be very cute mm -hmm. um pookie said any corvid near them they fly up to a chat slash chase them away yeah so very protective mm. well yeah that that was mine lovely Oh, I, I love lapwings. I've only seen them properly once, I think, yeah. But oh, 
B2 birds. Thank you for telling us more about that one. Of course. I'll do mine. Mine is a plant. Um, it's the sundew. Uh -huh. um, so I seen one of those this week, and I thought I'd talk about it because they're very cool plants. Um, so sundew has about height up to twenty centimeters and can be seen from June to August. So this one here is the round leaf sundew. And it's a strange and beautiful plant that can be found sitting among the soggy sphagnum mosses at the shores of bog pools on wet heaths and peaty moors. A tiny slender plant, it, as a tiny slender plant, it stands out from the crowd because of its diet. Hair-like tendrils on each reddish leaf are tipped with glistening droplets that attract passing insects. But this dew is very sticky, trapping the insects. The sundews tendrils detect the presence of its stuck prey and curl inwards to engulf it. Eventually the whole leaf wraps around the insect which is digested. The acidic habitats that the round leaf sundew lives in don't provide enough nutrients so it has evolved this carnivorous way of life to supplement its diet. The greeny red leaves of the round leaf sundew are covered in red hairs and arranged at the base of the plant in a rosette. The white or pink flowers appear in summertime at the top of the hairless red stems. The round leaf sundew can be distinguished from the oblong leaved sundew by the rounder shape of its leaves. So it can be found in Scotland where it's common, north, so common in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, and can be found in England, but mainly in the southwest and northwest. So the one in the picture is a round leaf sundew, but there are actually three species found in the UK. Round leaf sundew, oblong leaf sundew and the great sundew with the main difference being the size and shape of their leaves, where they all catch their prey in the same way. The one you most often see is the round leaf sundew, so the one in the picture. Uh, the dew of round leaf sundews once formed the basis of anti-aging potions, as people believed it was a source of youth and virility, the sundew itself glistening and moist even in the most fierce sun. Later on, the plant was also used as a love charm because of its power to lure and trap helpless insects. So there you go. It's a round a, leaf sundew. It's a, it's a cool plant. It does look like it should be in like the the Amazon or something. Do you know what I mean? It looks tropical. It does look very, yeah, just unnatural. Yeah, I love that we can find it in this country. Mm -hmm. I forgot to say, in Welsh. Ah, okay. Copy and paste. Oh, I, I apologize again for translation uh, pronunciation, but I think it's like Gwishilis. Like, I was like G W L, like Gwishilis. I think. Nice. Oh. Yes, the sundew. The sundew, yeah. It's a, it's a cool plant, and that is carnivorous as well. Like, mm. yes, yeah, so they're actually surprisingly common. So, if you do have any boggy places near you, then definitely recommend having a look because they're very small, so they're just very easily overlooked. And if you go looking for them, then you might come might come across one. So actually, I, f I found these once and it was in the New Forest. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's the only time I found one. But I'm going to keep an eye out because I want to find some near me. Mm, no, very cool. <laughs> this will actually have they tried antibiotics to supplement their diet. <laughs> Maybe you just put like a daily vitamin. It's like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zoni, Zoni Do in Dutch. Zoni Do. Zoni Do. Zoni Dao. Zoni Dao. Dao. Zoni Dao. Poor Pookie having to live with. Our poor Dutch pronunciations. I know. Zone it, zone it down. His ears are probably screaming. He's <laughs> like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, shall we move on to the news? Yeah. Or is it maybe before we can look at the Discord? Oh, uh, the Discord. Encounters. Wildlife encounters. Yeah, still here. Um, so thank you, everyone, for putting in your wildlife encounters. So many. Um, really lovely to see everyone's uh, just photos and videos and stories. Yeah. Um, Pookie has, as ever, has 
gives a whole journal and photo gallery of images, which are really cool. So thank you, Pookie. Um, and we've got a few to show. So we've got a few Pookies with the great spotted woodpecker, which is really cool. Um, that beast of a hole. I know. Oh, it's huge. Fair play. Um, That's a hard day's work. Hmm. No, they're such cool animals, woodpeckers. I love them. Gorgeous, aren't they? These are brilliant pictures. Mm. I think this one is the mum greatest spotted woodpecker, bringing food to the little ones. Like, oh, I really like the stories that Pook Pookie can have. It's like next one's like the dad follows and you see the little ones. Do it closely. Um, Won't be long before we peek out since the next picture. It's just really nice story going. It's nice. Nice white oh, man. And is this so? Was this Pookie's? Was this Pookie's? Yes, this is in our moth folder on our Discord. So any moths, please put it on there. Um, this is a white omen from Pookie. So thank you. Uh, on as a Pookie said. As well. Yeah, I wonder, absolutely. If, I wonder if it's a shop moth or it just a wall moth. Just, just a wall moth. <laughs> um, yes, no trapping involved, but plenty of moth seeing. So they're they're out there to be found and appreciated. House wall moth. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe we have to have a different category. House wall oh, moths. Yeah. moths. <laughs> <laughs> the shopping or staying or. <laughs> Working if I'm at the office. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't remember if we had any more. Is this I one of, yeah, one of Andy's, which was really nice. Lovely. This is what to come next week, guys. Mm -hmm. oh, I imagine Andy's going to have some great wildlife encounters, yeah. especially two weeks worth. Um, yeah. Here's a great day at RSPB Bempton Cliffs from a few days ago. Very nice. Lovely. I'm very jealous. Hmm. Yes, I do. I'll do. I think I can do the Discord thing here. Aha, yes. So do join the Discord. Um, really lovely community. Chatting wildlife, sharing our encounters. All things nature and wildlife. It's lovely. Yeah. Oh, yes, the kestrel. I forgot about the kestrel. I think it's also from. Pookie, yes. Nice. Uh, male kestrel for Andy, so if you, have, uh, if you only hit Andy. Just love a kestrel. This one's for you. Yeah, really nice. Thanks, guys, for sending those in. Keep them coming, especially the moths. Yes. <laughs> I do, says Andy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do our news then? Yep, let's go on yeah. to news. The news. What have you got this week? Um, should I put mine in the chat? If we could share this, or if it's too late, that would be amazing. Um, if we could share the screen. Um, but I have peak project begins to save four thousand tons of carbon. We love yeah. peak. Yeah, yeah peak. So a major project to lock up more than 4,000 tonnes of carbon in peat soil by creating a wetland has gone underway. Speechley's farm in the Great Fen, remember we've talked about the Great Fen before, where they're basically, they're trying to connect, um, let me remember, home fen and another fen that I forgot, I always forget the name of. They're basically trying to buy the land in between these two large fens um, to then connect them both and make a, a really nice um, big wildlife habitat of fen, which is such a rare habitat. So yeah, mm. it's a great project. It's um, Wildlife Trust, so definitely check it out if you're more interested. Um, but yeah, Species Farm in the Great Fen, Cambridgeshire, was bought by the country's Wildlife Trust to help preserve soil and support wildlife. It said peak farming was the largest source of carbon emissions in the country. Kate Carver, the great friend project manager, said the agricultural area will be transformed into a nature heaven with huge benefits to our climate. The farmer, 
The farmland was purchased with funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, a major public appeal by the Wildlife Trust for Beds, Cairns and North Ants. The first stage of the project began in, in May as the peat soil was seeded with a mix of five native grasses. Later in the year, grazing animals will move into that 134 hectare site near Ramsey and groundwork will take place next year to, to transform it into a wetland habitat. Peatlands are a natural carbon dioxide sink, absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere and retaining it in the soil rather than the atmosphere. In Europe alone, peatland locks up five times more carbon than forest, which is mad. Wow. The Trust said East Anglia has lost 99% of its wet fenland as a result of drainage and its great fen vision aimed to link up some of the remaining fragments. It's hoped to create an a new 14 square mile peat landscape that would provide lost wildlife as well as trialing crops that can grow in wet soil. In time, this land will become home to wetland birds like red shag, snipe, as well as insects, wildflowers, otters, and many other species. M many farmers were looking for the future to manage the land sustainably while still producing a commercial crop. This project will help to provide the answers they need. This is a very special moment as the first seeds are sown on the journey towards turning this land into a thriving wetland habitat. The grass will secure the soil, locking in the carbon and laying the foundations for the exciting work happening over the next few years. So yeah, very yeah. exciting news article there. Yeah, really interesting. It's nice having like farming and wildlife, like sustainable farming. Yeah. It can benefit both people and it's so possible and better for both worlds it's, oh, it's very exciting yeah 100 percent, and like 99 percent, we lost 99 percent of the fen and for That's it being crazy. such a, a massive carbon storage it just seems like an, a no-brainer doesn't it so hmm. yeah was it was it 14 square miles 14 square miles yeah that's a huge area of peatland is that's really important yeah yeah, so very exciting stuff. We love fun. Yeah. We love fun. <laughs> but yeah, what about you? Have you got good news, bad news? Uh, yeah, two two good news stories. Um, I say Pookie says saw a hobby as well that day, but no picture though. And then Deacon Winter saying hobbies are amazing. I've watched them hunt dragonflies. Hobbies are cool. To hunt dragonflies as well. Oh. So. Agile and fun yeah. is amazing. Um, but yes, I have two two good news stories, uh, both from BBC. I'll start with Chelsea Show, so the Chelsea Wildflower Chelsea Flower Show. Um, most biodiverse garden has won gold. Oh. So, a garden thought to be the most biodiverse entry in the Chelsea Flower Show's history has been awarded a coveted gold medal. The size of Wales Garden, which features more than three hundred different plant species was also judged to be the best in its category at the prestigious show. Its message is about the importance of tropical forests, which are home to half of all animal and plant species on the planet. Designer Dan Bristow from Bethesda Gwynedd said the win was a dream come true and he couldn't be happier. The garden includes 313 species of plants, reflecting the number of different types of trees that can occur in a single hectare of tropical forest. Is that a single hectare of 313 species? It's an amazing abundance of diversity of life and is something that really needs protecting and showcasing, Mr. Bristow explained. While visitors to the garden are immersed in a rich green landscape representative of a rainforest, all the plants can and have been grown in the UK. Mr. Bristow said he hoped it would inspire people to consider making the planting in their own gardens more diverse in order to benefit wildlife. It's been the main thing on my mind for many months and it's been an enormously complicated process bringing it into being, he said. It's really special to be recognised because we took a risk with this design and went out on a limb to do something different. I'm elated and exhausted in equal measures, he added. The garden was commissioned by climate change charity Size of Wales, which works to protect areas of tropical rainforest, tropical forest overseas. The garden itself was designed in the shape of Wales and features some of the country's rarest plants. So there's a nice picture um, you can see on screen now yeah. of the design of the garden, which is really cool. Um, they include the Beacon's Hawkweed, or Hy oh gosh, Heracium Breconicola, 
which can only be found on a remote mountain ledge in the Banai Brecheniog National Park, also known as the Brecon Beacons. Meanwhile, the Brecon Dandelion, or Taraxacum Brecon Breconini? Bre Breconense. Breconense? Maybe, yeah. Uh, once found across uh, Monmouthshire and Powys, is also on the verge of extinction. It was entered into the All About Plants category at the Chelsea Flower Show for garden designs where, which are at least 80% planted. Sides of Wales's director Nicola Pullman said it was great honour to be part of the event. We're reaching out to lots more people, we're a small charity but we have a big impact, she said. After its stint in the spotlight at Chelsea, the entire garden will be moved to Bangor University's Triborth Garden, uh, Bangor University's Triborth Botanic Garden, which is just up the road from me, so I'm actually nice. going to see that. Um, oh, yeah. Creator Natalie Chivers, Chivers um, said it would be a really special and appropriate home for the award-winning garden. So that's, that's nice. Cool. So yeah. big flower show, usually just seeing kind of lots of non-native, bright, colourful plants which win things, but not this time. Beautiful yeah. in its own way, biodiverse, and it won gold. So it's really exciting to see that. Yeah, it just shows how people's kind of minds and perceptions and everything are changing for the better. Mm. Yeah, it's nice and hopeful. Mm. And that it's going to be reused, that they're going to put it at Bangor University. It's not going to waste. It's, it's going to be replanted, and yeah. So I'll hopefully go and see that depending on when it does, uh, I don't think it's when it's, I think it's just after the event. Yeah, after the spot like Chelsea, so Ooh. hopefully I can report back. Yeah. And see that. Um, yes, one piece of good news to the next one. So another article, also from BBC, saying, forests to be left to nature in biodiversity boost. More than 8,000 hectares of land will be left to nature to help boost wildlife and biodiversity. The new forest management project by Forestry England will be carried out in four areas, including Castle Neroch Ner right, in Somerset and Kilda Forest in Northumberland. The project will include a number of activities, such as the possible reintroduction of lost wildlife like butterflies, rare plants and beavers, and the moving of fungi to restore soil. Andrew Stringer, Forestry England's Head of Environment, said, We will intervene less less in these four wild areas, giving nature the time and space to reshape the forest landscape. Forestry England said the areas, which also include Newtondale in North Yorkshire and Purbeck in Dorset, will welcome visitors, but will continue to be a source of sustainable timber through an innovative, innovative model of productive forestry. Mr Stringer said, while they do not know exactly how each of the areas will change, the uncertainty is a positive part of being experimental and allowing natural processes to shape each landscape in the years ahead. We are confident that whatever happens, these areas will become more nature-rich with benefits for neighbouring landscapes, he added. He said that forestry will still be an essential activity, but over time the benefits of less intervention will be enormous in terms of climate resilience, reserving biodiversity loss, providing greater natural capital benefits to society such as natural flood mitigation, soil health, air quality and carbon storage. Forestry England, which manages more than 250,000 hectares across the country, said the project is being funded by the government and forest holidays. The work will also be carried out alongside nature restoration and scientific data gathering experts to analyse progress. Nice. Really exciting. Yeah, and such a large area as well. Yeah, so more than 8,000 hectares. Is really wow. good. Whoa, that is that is a lot, especially for for the UK. Yeah, that's that is really so important. Yeah. Yeah, so not big plantations and just clear felling and everything is really destructive. Sustainable felling, really exciting. And it's not just like the rewilding where you just let it do its own thing and that's it, that's the best thing to do. It's like just monitoring it. And then if something does need to happen, so if there's evasives coming in or something's going wrong, you can change it. And then just letting nature do its thing when it can. So really exciting to see what happens like in the future. Very yeah, it, that is that is really exciting. Yeah, hundred percent. Look at us, three good news stories. Mhm. Mm what a good week. Had and good week. I guess you could say good news. We got a general election coming up on the 
fourth, fourth or seventh of July, early July, yeah. I think fourth. So, big thing over the next month or so will be um, UK's parties talking about what they're going to promise for us, and hopefully yeah. a lot of it will be climate orientated. Hopefully, yes, and yes. hopefully things will be stuck to as well. Yes, but so. We We'll keep an eye out and everyone be aware that there might be a large flood of information and possibly misinformation mm -hmm. about climate and non-climate related news. So hopefully all good things coming out, but keep an eye out. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, definitely keep an eye out. Be aware. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people are saying also. Mm. What they're proposed. Yeah, no, it is really big with the, um, is it Nature Now March? I can't remember the name of it. The big oh, march. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. On the uh, 22nd of June. Yeah. Which is a good time because it's before the general election. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, lots of big, important activities happening. Restore Nature Now. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Um, Restore Nature Now March on the 22nd of June. He'll be there. Yeah. Big exciting things coming up. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I guess we'll probably just be touching on it more as as more things come out with all of that. So, yeah, we can have more discussions once it's once we get the lowdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, exciting. Exciting times. <laughs> What are your plans for the next week or so, or two weeks? If you don't see for two weeks. Well, I'm written off this week with my yeah. own. <laughs> so oh. not, not much, not much um, this week. Next week, we'll see. More NASDAQ surveys, but like I said, probably won't be showing those in, for a couple, a month or so. Um... And then Newt surveys, but I think everyone's bored of the Newts, so... <laughs> Never get oh, yeah. the bored of Newts. True, well, I can't, but... <laughs> and mothing. Mothing mm. is going to start when the weather gets nicer. Uh, Andy says, do a bird survey from your window. You know what? I've got loads and loads of sparrows outside my window, so it'll yeah. be a bird survey of one species. <laughs> Many sparrows. <laughs> many, many sparrows. Yeah. But yeah, I'll make sure we get off lots of mothing for when I come back in two weeks. I will Sorry. hopefully have lots of moths to show. But yeah, what about you? Which I think I have in the next week. Um, I think just a few days where just like general work and then probably stumble across something. Um, I think, yeah, I got my dragonfly survey training on Friday. That it's that a bit fun. exciting. So, like yeah. a morning of learning ID, and then afternoon of like going out doing a survey. So, I'm excited to learn them and then go out afterwards. I guess I know what that one is because I had a reptile survey training oh. a few weeks ago, maybe around a month. That was really nice saying, like, here's a few different reptiles, then going out and then using your skills. Like, oh, yes, that's a male slower, a female slower. Common lizards, all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for that. Um, yes, this one, it's Bank Holiday Monday. Oh, yeah. Enjoying a long weekend. True. Hopefully the weather's good. Yeah. I, you know what? I would like to do something nice naturey on on the Monday. Mm. Mm. So many opportunities. Yes. I do want to go see a seabird colony. Mm -hmm. There's one nearby called RSBB South Stack. And I, I miss my seabirds a lot. I need mm. to go go see my I was like my children. That's not, not <laughs> I, just, I, I love them a lot. So go see them again. Um, it's been too long. Nice. Yes. Well, you also to you. There's I'm off to Yorkshire Dales National Park hiking most likely. That sounds lovely. Hope you have good weather for that. Yeah. You're lovely. <laughs> They've got good waterfalls, haven't they? The Yorkshire Dales. Hmm. Yeah, I think they have. 
Um, well, Pookie says, didn't find the reptile I tried to find. Well, Next time, Pookie. If yeah, it then. was about Pookie, me too. So join, <laughs> join the club. It's not a very nice club. But... It's a hopeful club. Next it's time, the adult will be there. When you least expect it. <laughs> oh, hi, Bodacris. Nice to see you here. A long weekend, unless you work in customer service or visitor operations. Yes, I can imagine it'd be a very long weekend. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so many bank holidays. It's like, was it like four or so in a month or two? I remember Andy saying the See, last I've... bank holiday yeah. Monday was like the busiest he's ever had. Yeah. We we send our thoughts with you, Bird Chris, on Monday. Yes. Everyone in customer service and visitor operations, yeah. good luck for the long weekend. Hang in there. Hang in there. And if all goes wrong, dress up as a di- giant toad and just ha- have a go at people. <laughs> That's the way. When in do doubt. It. <laughs> when in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pookie says the elusive tree frogs. Oh, that would be so... Oh, I want to see them. Maybe back holiday Monday, they might show up. Exactly. Off work, like, oh, yeah, let's go. Go chill on a tree. Yeah. The Pookie's yeah. come round. Haven't got a nine to five today. <laughs> Taking <it> easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's everything for tonight. Yeah. Um, I think we'll try and raid someone again. Mm-hmm. See who's out and about. Does anyone have a channel which we can go and raid? Nice nature, wildlifey channel. Because we've done California Burbs. And Hoot House live stream, which I love. I love just saying Hoot House live stream. That's a fun <laughs> word to say. Yeah, good um, twang. Mm. So, is, if anyone else has a channel, we can go and say hi to. Any good wildlife we can watch. But I think Hoot House live stream before had some. I think it was hawk, hawk babies, and I think when we joined, within like five minutes, one of the whole baby's fledged and they've been waiting oh. for ages and then we joined and one left it was oh, very exciting so very like, we joined exciting. at the right time and <laughs> it was really nice nice maybe we'll have the good luck again maybe we could go back to hoot house live stream i'll see what they're doing quickly um and he says wing it wing span is live oh let's try wing it wing span Okay, wingspan. I love wingspan. Mm-hmm. For me, it doesn't say they're live now. Is this they stream two hours ago? Oh, unless they don't say they've just finished. It said they were streaming two hours ago. Here is the most recent stream, which is just over two hours long. So we might have just mm-hmm. missed them, sadly. Which is very sad. Um, we could do Hoot House live stream. Because we got the Hawk Baby still around. All three Hawk Babies have fledged, but still around. Another American option, Cat Bird Kate. It's not you, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh, that's a nice one. Should we go with Catbird Kate? Yeah, let's go for it. Nice. Catbirdina birds and squirbs. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice one. So I think. This will like if we can raid Catbird Kate. Aha! Oh, just like that. Um, hey, thank you to Thistleax for producing yes. this episode. Much. You may have noticed none of us have been stressed with things <laughs> loading and changing. It's all been flawless. So, everyone say thank you to Thistleax for producing. Who's flawless for the first time on Nature's BS here. Very, very grateful. Yes, thank you so much. 
Thank you everyone for joining. Hope you have a wonderful week and see lots of wildlife. Yes. And we'll see you next Discord. week. Yes, person Discord. I think next week will be myself and Andy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so go off to cat, cat bird Kate. Go and say hi. Look at some burbs. Look at some burbs. <laughs>